Hello everyone. My topic for today is human dignity and rights. The objectives of this session is to understand the concept of human rights, to appreciate the principles of human rights, to determine the role of the state in human rights promotion and protection, and to also analyze how rights are promoted and protected. I hope by now that uh, you have been able to view the video that I have shared. It's called the story of human rights. If not, the link is there right on your screen. Please watch it before we have this session. It would be very useful for you. Since you already have at least a background of human rights, the question is, what is human dignity? When we talk about dignity, okay, the dignity of a person or dignity per se, if you look at the definition, the dictionary definition of dignity, it talks about the state or quality of being worthy of honor or respect. Okay? So you feel honored or you feel respected. Paano nga ba tayo feeling honored or respected? Is it in the house? Do we feel that we have dignity if we live in a nice and decent home? Okay? How many of us, when we feel that in order to have dignity, if you imagine, no, pag pumikit kayo, ano bang klaseng bahay ang gusto nyo? Okay. If you think of the food that you want to eat, meron bang kinalaman yung kinakain natin sa ating dignidad, sa ating honor? How about our clothing? Nasa kasuotan ba natin ang pagpapakita ng isang honor natin o dignidad? Okay? So when we talk about dignity, what are the things you think, do you think, that would give us honor and dignity? In short, don't all of us want to have a good life? Diba? Kapag tayo iniisip natin, ano bang inaasam natin sa buhay? We want to have a good life. The reason why you are right now in the university is because you want to have a better life. Okay? So if we go back to all those photos that I've shown you, diba? in order for us to have the dignity that we want, what are the elements to have the dignity? Probably you will say, siguro para masarap ang buhay ko, maginhaw ang buhay ko, kailangan ko ng education. That's where you are right now. But what kind of education? Not only any type of education. You want to have quality education. For you to have quality of education, dapat maganda rin yung foundation mo. Especially if you want to pass in uh, the top universities here in the Philippines. You have to have a good foundation. Okay? In order to have the good foundation, hindi naman lahat tayo e eh, pinapalad na merong time and merong resources to go to school. Diba? So many of us, swinerte because our parents or some of our relatives are able to send us to school. Paano ba nila nagawa yun? Kasi siguro meron silang magandang trabaho. No? Parang circle, no? Paano ka ba makakakuha ng magandang trabaho? Ngayon, makakakuha ka ng magandang trabaho kung maganda rin yung education mo. So it's a cycle, okay? It's a cycle, okay? So when we talk about the cycle, okay, we think of dignity at times with many things that we possess. But the reality is that we are, there is a lot of inequality. Can there be dignity in inequality? Of course, because when you talk about human dignity, it is the recognition that we, human beings, possess a special value intrinsic to our humanity and such worthy of respect. Why? Simply because we are human beings. So this is what we call about human dignity. It's not in the possession. It's not in what we own. It's not in what we wear. But we are treated as human beings. And this is where human rights come in. When we talk about human rights, we talk about 
human rights as a standard. Ano ba yung mga human rights na yan? Kanina sabi ko, siguro kung gusto kong guminhaw ang buhay ko, kailangan ko ng education. Para mayroon akong quality education, sana yung mga magulang ko can afford to pay for my education. ba? Diba? Paano nga ba sila makakakuha ng uh, magandang salary o magandang sweldo? ba? Diba? Kasi mayroon mga companies na hindi nagpipigay ng mga tamang sahod. ba? Diba? Kaya anong ginagawa ng ating mga workers? At times, they go on strike. ba? Diba? It is their expression that they are not satisfied with what they are actually getting. Okay? So when we talk about rights, okay, tandaan nyo na when we talk about dignity, when we talk about rights, we are born in unequal circumstances. But when we talk about rights, particularly our human rights, they are universal. Pare-pareho tayo ng karapatan. Mahirap, mayaman, may kaya, no? Uh, bata, matanda, lalaki, babae, or anyone in between, pare-pareho tayo ng karapatan. That is the universality of rights. And our rights are inherent in all of us. As long as we were born, we are already endowed with these rights. That's why it's inherent. These rights are inalienable. Hindi natin pwedeng ibenta. Hindi natin pwedeng ipamigay sa atin to. Okay? But more importantly, we have to understand that when we talk about human rights, at dito maraming nakakamali ang mga tao, human rights is not only about the civil and political rights. Sinasabi kasi parate, human rights, yan ba yung pagrarali? Pagsisigaw sa kalye? Hindi. Hindi lang yon because that is part of human rights. But human rights also includes economic rights. Okay? Yung sweldo, yung uh, social security ng ating mga relatives, ng ating mga magulang. It also entails social rights, our right to belong to communities, right to health, right to education, and cultural rights. Okay? Our creations, our culture, our belongingness. Okay? So lahat to, they are indivisible and interrelated. And this is the reason why, for example, workers wanting to have better pay, which is an economic right, would have to go to the streets, okay? would have to protest or, take, or uh, declare a strike against their employer, which is a civil and political right, okay? in order to express that they are not satisfied with the status quo. Okay? They are all interrelated. But what are the standards? What are the standards? Kasi pinag-uusapan natin mga karapatan eh. Saan ba nasusulat na dapat meron tayong mga minimum? Okay? And this one, we will just go through it quite quickly. Okay? The standards is based on international law. Kanina, I mentioned that human rights are already inherent in all of us. Nasa sa atin na. But how do we ensure that our government will actually promote and protect our rights. Remember na kahit na sinabi natin universal ang rights, the fact remains that in other parts of the world, it is more restrictive than others. And this is where governments come in. Because governments are the ones which guarantee whether we are able to enjoy our rights or not. In short, nasa sa atin eh. Pero kung ito ay sinusupil ng ating gobyerno, anong kailangan natin gawin? We need to demand for these rights. And again, paano natin malalaman kung ano ang ating mga karapatang pantao? Then we look at international law. Okay? Because it has been guaranteed by our states under international law. We have what you call the International Bill of Human Rights. Itong International Bill of Human Rights consists of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It is like the mother document or the mother constitution of our human rights. Okay? It, is, it has been adopted by the United Nations way back in December 10, 1948. 
It is uh, translated in many constitutions of the world, including the Philippines. Makikita natin yan sa ating 1987 constitution na sa ating Bill of Rights at nakakalat sa other articles ng ating constitution. Okay. Aside from the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, okay, uh, by the way, a declaration under international law is seen to be non-binding. Okay? It is a standard, yet it is non-binding. What is considered as binding? Yung mga tinatawag na treaties, conventions, covenants. Okay? These are the ones that are binding. So the Universal Declaration of Human Rights consists of civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Na-explain ko na kanina, iba't ibang klase ng karapatan. But lumped together, this is what you call our human rights. But because governments, being governments, napopolitika nila ang human rights. No? The binding instruments were mainly divided into two. One is the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. So when we talk about civil and political rights, usually this, these are the rights to due process of law, individual freedoms, freedom from uh, various forms of discrimination, political participation, right of suffrage, yung pagboto natin, right to peaceably assemble, our right not to be arrested without any warrant. Okay, these are examples of our civil and political rights. Yung isa ay yung International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights. So these are the labor rights, standard of living, adequate standard of living, right to education, right to health, participation in cultural life, rights, social security, even love life, no? right to found a family, to find a partner. Okay? Lahat yan makikita sa economic, social, and cultural rights. So, the three of these is what we call our International Bill of Human Rights. So again, parang under international law, yung mga gobyerno natin, they split the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the complete package, they split it into two. Okay? Civil and political, economic, social, and cultural rights. Historically, Meron kasing pinang pinaghuhugutan uh, tong mga to. This is what you call in a way the battle between the east and the west. Ito yung in the past what you call the cold war, no? Sabi ng mga western countries, we believe more on civil and political rights, no? Yung mga freedoms. Sabi naman ng mga eastern countries, ito yung mga socialists, communists, we believe more on economic, social, and cultural rights. That's why they don't believe too much on freedom of speech, expression. They don't believe in a democratic way of electing the government officials. Diba? Pero, come to think of it, ikaw, ano sa tingin mo ang mas importante sa iyo? Civil, political, or economic, social, and cultural rights? I guess the answer is very obvious, no? If I were to choose, bakit ako mamimili? I should enjoy everything. Diba? Because all these rights are interrelated and they are in fact indivisible. Okay? But it is our governments that try to politicize. No? It is a commitment on their part that they should promote, protect, and fulfill all of these rights. Okay? There are also special instruments or conventions for particular issues. Okay. Example, there is this international convention on the elimination of all forms of racial discrimination. So when we talk about racial discrimination, it talks about the distinction, exclusion, restriction, or preference based on your discrimination based on your race, your color, descent, or national or ethnic origin. Diba? Yung pinaka-blatant is based on your race or color. And at times, this is what we see right now in other parts of the world. No? Uh, for example, if you go to the US, yung slogan na let's make America great again. 
Diba? Ano nangyayari? There is now this type of discrimination between white and non-whites. Diba? Nagiging race supremacy. Okay? So up to now, there is discrimination based on race that is happening. Then we have the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Okay? The, this convention is the most ratified convention. Okay? Most ratified conven human rights convention. All countries in the world ratified it except the United States. And in this Rights of the Child, it talks about the whole gamut, civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights of the child. It looks at the best interest of the child. Okay? That's the center. The best interest of the child. We also have the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. So it is true, even if we see, well, there's a lot of women empowerment nowadays, still the reality is there is a lot of discrimination being done against women, even in our society right now in the Philippines. Okay? It, in a way, there are parts where it is still very patriarchal. Okay? And even violence against women, it's about power, diba? Kasi kaya yung mga domestic violence, it happens because the male feel that they have power over women. But this is part of the discrimination. So this convention wants to ensure that, that any distinction, exclusion, or restriction made on the basis of sex, okay, and which will impair or nullify the recognition, enjoyment, or exercise of women, of their rights, is actually discrimination. Okay? So right now, based on this convention, okay, we also have another concept which is gender. Okay? But again, that's another top topic. But it shows that the heart is discrimination. There is also this convention against torture and other cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment and punishment. Okay? So, okay, when we talk about this convention, uh, it talks about torture being defined as an, any act which is of severe pain or suffering, whether physical or mental, mental which is intentionally inflicted on a person. Okay? What many people... Um, don't understand is that when you talk about torture, there is a purpose for such pain or suffering. Okay? And you will see it here. Okay? The purpose is in order to intimidate or coerce okay, a person. Intimidate or coerce. Okay? Why? Because you want to get information or a confession from that person. So that's why you torture it. And that's why when we talk of torture, inhuman or degrading treatment or punishment, it's usually attributed under the law, nakalagay dyan, on persons who are in authority or public officials. Okay, so there's a technical meaning for torture. So it's not only the pain, but it is the purpose of extracting a confession or information. The next is the International Convention on the Protection of the Rights of All Migrant Workers and Members of Their Families. Uh, this is quite important, especially, for example, in the Philippines, where we are a migrant-sending country. Okay? Uh, it aims to protect not only migrant workers. Remember that uh, what are the concerns of migrant workers? They get separated from their family. There's a lot of uh, families who are left behind. Okay? So... There are, there are also issues where at times migrant workers are recruited and then they are trafficked in persons. No? They are trafficked. Ano ba yung trafficking in persons? For example, they will promise you na oh, magtrabaho ka sa isang restaurant. No? And then you'll find out pagdating mo doon, you will put you will be put in an abusive condition. No? You, will put in a, you will be put in a sex den or you will be put in a sweat shop or sweat factory, your passport will be confiscated, or kaya yung pinatawag na contract switching. Okay? So these are examples that this convention would like to protect. 
Unfortunately, this convention is ratified mostly by countries that are sending migrant workers. Only a few uh, receiving countries of migrant workers have ratified this yet. Then we have the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. So when we talk about persons with disabilities, it talks about different types of disability. Okay? It doesn't only talk about physical disability. Usually, the concept of disability are those that are physically manifested. If they are blind, the deaf, those who are uh, with uh, mobility impairment, yung mga hindi makalakad, okay, mga naka-wheelchair, but it also takes into consideration of other types of disability, including mental disability, for example. Okay. So the challenge or the question here is how do we ensure that we create opportunities for people with for people with disabilities to be able to enjoy certain rights that we enjoy. Okay. So that is what we call trying to be equal. And last is the International Convention for the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearances. And enforced disappearance is uh, defined as the arrest, detention, abduction or any other form of deprivation or liber liberty by whom by state agents or by persons who are acting in authority from the state so in short ito yung pagdukot o pagkidnap pero sino gumawa mga members of the state ang tawag doon ay enforced disappearance so this is okay, in a way the different international human rights treaties that we have at the moment. Okay. So, yan ang ating standard. Okay. Yan ang core international human rights treaties natin. So, if that is the standard, let's look at the local application. How do you usually apply it locally? Aside from the Constitution, in order to apply it locally, dapat eh, na isa sa batas yan. Okay. That is where our Congress come in. This is a photo of the recent protest of jeepney drivers in light of the COVID-19 situation, pandemic. Ano ba yung situation natin? Alam naman natin na mahirap ang kalaban ng COVID-19. Hindi natin makita ang kalaban natin. Okay? So that is why the government suspended public transport. Tingin nyo ba, sino ang pinaka-apektado ngayon dito sa pandemic na to? Diba? Ang pinaka-apektado ay yung mga mahihirap natin. They are the most vulnerable. They are the most marginalized. Okay? In fact, those of us who can actually stay home, be able to do our work, be able to study, okay? tayo ang mga privileged kasi hindi lahat kaya yan. Okay? So for example, itong mga jeepney drivers na to, okay, Ano ang right nila that is actually impaired? Their economic right. Hindi sila makapamasada. Nagugutom sila. Nagugutom mga pamilya nila. Wala silang kita. Okay? Wala silang, pag walang kita, hindi lang sila nagugutom. Paano yung kanilang shelter? Paano yung education ng mga, ba ng mga anak nila? Paano ang healthcare nila? Paano pag magkasakit sila? No? Free na lang ba lahat? Diba? So, in order for them to let our gover government know that they are in need of help, this is what they do. They exercise their civil and political rights. Okay? This is their freedom of expression, freedom of speech, and this is their right to peaceably assemble. Pero alam naman natin, napalitaan rin naman siguro nyo, na there are instances when they were arrested no, simply because they are seeing that they are going hungry at the moment. Okay? Another vulnerable sector, sabi ko sa inyo kanina, especially at this time of the pandemic, ang mga tinatamaan, yung mga mahihirap. Okay? These are uh, locally stranded individuals. Okay? Many of them would like to go home to provinces. Why? Because they have no more opportunities here in Metro Manila. No? wala na silang pambayad sa mga bahay nila, nagugutom sila. Okay? But yet, 
it's very difficult for them to get home. Okay? So again, uh, it is a combination of the civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. No? So pag sinabi natin uh, civil rights nila, okay, they have a right to express if they think they are not getting the proper treatment, the proper services that should be given to them by the government. And why do I always talk about the government? Because when you talk about human rights, kanina we were talking about international law, okay? These are all obligations of the government. So when you talk about international law, sino ba ang pwedeng tumaya at sino ba ang pwedeng mag-commit sa international community? And these are our governments. That those treaties are obligations of our government. And the obligations are threefold. To respect, protect, and fulfill. Okay? Pag sinabi natin respeto, yung government mismo ang hindi magpa-violate. Okay? Dapat hindi maunang mag-violate ang rights natin, ang gobyerno. To protect, dapat magpasa ng mga batas. Okay? Merong mga batas na nagpro-protect sa atin. So for example, uh, another an, an example of a right, for example, if we are uh, arrested without a warrant, no? dapat merong legal framework for us to be able to get out of jail because there was a wrong that was done to us. So that is the right to protect. Okay? There is a guarantee that we can be protected. But if there is no guarantee, there is no local law, then that is where the obligation of the state to fulfill comes in. It must adopt appropriate measures to ensure that we enjoy the rights. Kaya threefold okay, ang obligation ng state to respect, protect, and fulfill human rights. Okay? When we talk about government, basic political science, <laughs> ang government ay merong three branches. Di ba? Uh, executive, legislative, and the judiciary. Okay? So, all of these, lahat sila, they form part of our government. The obligations lie with all of them. So, for example, if you talk about human rights, okay, and then, let's say, for example, there is uh, there is uh, someone who was massacred. Di ba? Oftentimes, ang tanong ng lahat, asan ba ang Commission on Human Rights? Una-una, if it's a crime, there was a massacre, who is supposed to protect us? Okay? Diba? Dapat, ang nagpro-protect sa atin ay at ating local government and even the law enforcement, the police. Diba? Kaya nga meron silang zero crime uh, campaign. They want to ensure that there is no crime that's happening. Okay? So if a crime happens, who investigates? It's, it's the police. Okay? Where do you file cases? You file it before the DOJ and you file it with the courts. Okay? Anong ifa-file mo? So dapat merong batas para protected ka. Sinong gumagawa ng batas? Legislative. Pag finile mo sa court, sino magde-decide? Judiciary. Pag merong hatol yung judge, saan mo ikukulong kung guilty? Then you go back to the penitentiary which is under the executive. Okay? So, when you talk about human rights obligations, the burden is for the whole government with its three branches to respect, protect, and fulfill human rights. So, it's really wrong for us to expect dapat Commission on Human Rights yan. Hindi. Because what is the role of the Commission on Human Rights? The role of the Commission on Human Rights is really a watchdog. It's a watchdog of the government to ensure that the government is actually respecting, promoting, and uh, protecting, and fulfilling human rights. Siya talaga ang watchdog. Siya ang inaway konsyensya ng government. Okay? Because it is the government which has the primary responsibility to ensure that we enjoy our human rights. So I hope that uh, this short presentation enlightens each and everyone with regard to human dignity and human rights. Maraming salamat po.